This is the story of a virgin loser boy, Jinwo, who used to be treated as a traitor's son and even failed to awaken any superpowers, a complete failure. However, accidentally, he obtains a Godzilla system through the pendant containing his father's last remnants. In the previous episode, we learned that Dr. Animo is the former student of Su Ling's dad and will be present at tomorrow's event. On the present day, Jinwo arrived for his test, and the crowds are discussing that the girl in the poster is also participating in today's exam. Jinwo doesn't know that Su Ling is very popular. While she's waiting for Jinwo, she says she has been waiting for an hour here, her words enough to burn the crowd with jealousy. Then she takes him by her side, and they move quickly. Jinwo is quite scared by people's reaction while someone is blocking their way, the previous bully from his school. He didn't expect him to take this exam. Is last time's beating not enough for him? Did he forget how he ran to save his life? As per these examination rules, no supernatural fights are allowed, so he's not scared of her, at least here. There are many guards patrolling for this purpose. Can they really take on a two-on-five fight? Jinhuo wants to use his weapon, but Tia stops him and directly rushes and kicks all of them, locking his hand, which is about to break. He fails to use his supernatural strength enhancement ability, and in no second, the five versus one is over. This little packet is a nuclear bomb herself, making fun of him, while the crowds recognize her as the one who passed the test ten times in a row. Tia asks Jinwo, as this bully is kneeling for his mercy, will he forgive him? He lets him go, and they left, gathering with all the participants. Jinwo asks about the rumors spreading about Su Ling. Tia proudly says this time, Su Ling took the initiative to be an examiner's escort because she discovered a strange species, very rare to be born in this world. She wanted to add him to her party. In the crowd, Godzilla senses something. Is he talking about the bully? Not to mention the previous muscle man is also present. Something feels strange, so he places his big eye to observe him. He tells him to enter the car, and as he moves, he finds Dr. Animo here, along with her big green secretary. She says it's from his dad's order, and the bully boy gets into the car. On the exam center plaza filled with crowds, it feels more like a tournament to me. In front of them appears a person in charge of these examination rooms. He starts talking about their history, blah, blah, whatever. The contestants look funny, and by ignoring all his speech, let's begin. The big eye is trembling in fear, like it saw this thing in its dream. The bully boy appears, and the supervisor tells him that he is late, but soon runs to wet his pants in the corner as he sees a black, thick, mutated neck beast as I mentioned earlier. Today is the physical fitness test, and their test is conducted in this location. Jin Wo is having a tiring time. He's hardly able to keep up with them. Even the chubby one is in the lead. Obviously, they are all using their supernatural abilities. Su King already told him about the second test on physical fitness, while the third test is a practical one. Unlike his dad, he is pretty confident about his physical fitness as he never skips leg day. But it's not going to be a normal school physical test. Supernatural power is allowed. Fortunately, the awakened ones only have one ability, so they hardly trained their other parts. Just sticking to the middle of every test should get him to pass. His own human strength is enough to get him through this second test. His result reveals that he managed to get in the second to last position. This time, the passing rate increased from 10% to 20%. That's why he managed to get a passing result. She expected more from him. He should have used his projection wisely instead of relying on his human body. In order to become an awakened person, he has to work out for more than 10 years. So he wants to be dependent on his strength as much as possible. He's going to save his trump card until the most critical moment. While the examiner is quite happy about this year's result, this exam really produced a lot of good talents. For example, this fire boy who has an A-rank ability, and also this rare plant-type super being who unluckily always fails because of his physical weakness. Not only them, there's also a big figure, the son of Lin Shen and the son of the director of the Countermeasures Bureau. 
He has read the information on these two, but is still unaware of the actual ability of this boy. While he ranked first in the second test, the problem is, the son of the director of the countermeasure bureau has come to take the qualification examination. He doesn't know what that old fox, his dad, is planning. The fire boy appears in front of him and starts buttering, but he leaves. The third test is about to begin this afternoon. Those taking the test are asked to gather in a certain spot. They heard the announcement and appear in the square hall. The examiner announces the content of the third test. They have 90 minutes to find the hidden monster core in the examination room behind him. This surprises Jinhuo and causes panic among students. They thought this test had nothing to do with the monster crystal core. He gets annoyed and shouts at them, revealing that his skill is lion's roar. Maybe that's why he is the examiner. He asks them to follow him. As they arrive at the location, they find a great maze with many monster cores hidden. They can collect as much as they want within the time. This new test round excites her, while Su Ling says there's no restriction in this test. That means something is definitely going to happen. Jin Huo has his trump card for this test. His monster compass detects all the core's locations. He is surely going to win this round. As they all enter the maze, the door closes, and the timer starts. Al announces that the cores collected by them will become their belongings, which further excites them. They all move toward their favorite directions, while Jin Huo connects the location of nearby monster cores. Though he knows the locations, passing through this maze is still a difficult task. By following the radar, he rushes for the core. Meanwhile, a person with a unique ability that makes him aware of others' intentions follows him. In no time, Jinwo finds the crystal, happy to clear his first step to become a member of the Dai Society. Suddenly, a ninja rushes toward him and hits him hard. Jinwo doesn't understand what's going on. While the ninja runs away with the crystal core, he remembers the words that there are no restrictions. He asks Su Ling to stop him by using her grill attack, but she mistakenly grabs Jin Huo instead of the ninja. Tia appears and advises him to think carefully about what he can do in this situation. In this type of maze, it's better to hide and ambush others rather than exposing yourself. The concrete cracks and something appears toward the ninja. Some vines emerge, forming a giant hand that grabs him and demands the crystal. With no choice, he hands it over. This is the Vine Man, who has already failed ten times, and this time, he will do everything to succeed. He is an A-rank super being. However, the ninja starts smiling as he senses a burning sensation from his back. His vines are on fire. It's already been 24 minutes, and the number of participants is decreasing. Although awakened, people can see the spiritual energy of the monster core. They believe in eliminating the competition to increase their winning rate. Jinwo thinks that's the reason Tia is waiting here. Actually, she has already made arrangements. She takes out the monster core that Su Ling gave her. So, is she going to cheat? Meanwhile, on the test site, he asks to hand over the monster core, and he is going to fail this time too. Once he gets the badge, he can make a lot of money. The bully boy arrives, someone directing him to the location of the monster core. He tells him to hand over the monster core, and as he turns to look back, a giant serpent-like creature with a human face spooks him out. The parasite, similar to before, emerges from his neck, locating the crystal on his right hand. He recognizes him as his classmate, realizing that as long as he threatens him, he can easily get the monster core. He asks again to hand over the monster crystal and the parasite surrounds him. Anxiously, he mentions that he was the one who asked to pass this test to support his family. Without listening to any word, he is told to hand over the monster crystal. This is his only chance to escape poverty and his younger sibling expects him to join the Dai Society and make a lot of money. He can't give up at this moment. Although he couldn't beat Mr. Chen, and today he seems completely different, even though he has no chance against him, he tries his best and burns the parasite. He decides not to hand over the monster core to him, realizing that the stronger a person becomes, the sooner they become everyone's target. 
He asks the ninja and vine man to join him, but the parasite shatters his delusion. As he looks around, he finds that they are already knocked out. His attitude changes, and he starts begging for mercy, but the parasite moves to swallow him. He runs anxiously, and something falls from above, cutting its neck. His life is saved. He is rescued by Su Ling. Godzilla says he's still breathing, and he remembers where he smelled that before. It's similar to that disgusting guy. The parasite makes its movement, the fire guy moves away and thanks them. In no time, the parasite joins the muscle. This parasite is really disgusting, but the main problem is that there is more than one parasite here. What the hell is going on? It seems like this monster mimicked Chen Hu and sneaked into the closed examination room. So, they contact the exam center. Jin Wo is surprised that they brought this communication tool here. Su Ling's voice is heard by the examiner, and she asks to open the exit door. The examiner panics and reports it to the superior, checking the surveillance camera. She asks her, what's going on? Why are these fleshy bugs crawling around? And how did this monster invade the closed examination room? She tries to contact the technical team to open the door, but their system gets hacked by the bird girl. Now the entire examination room control system is under their control. If they dare to come inside and defeat them, the examination room is hijacked. Now they can only rely on themselves. Now is the time for the exam escort to play their role. She is not suitable for such work, so she leaves it to Sister Su Lin, and she will still execute the original battle plan. Originally, he saved his trump card to defeat all his opponents, but now he has to kill these bugs.